the Three Musketeers originally asked me <laughs> if I might do this. I was relieved to check my schedule. I was still on sabbatical. I looked at my schedule and there was a main info in that re retreat. And I said, oh, too bad. I can't do it. <laughs> then, the ch then that got changed and professional obligation <clears throat> suggested I should do this because somebody should do it. Um, today what I'm really um, going to do is, for the first 45 minutes or so, talk about some of the insights that I did get from my sabbatical, which was my second one, fortunately. Um, not my second one in Portland, I've only been there six years, but well, I have one in Brunswick, which was also just as valuable. I want to talk about Portland Public Library's response to um, certain conditions and also uh, embedding some of these insights that uh, I'll talk about. And I think specifically today, everyone in the room is a library director. And uh, my comments are going to be very, very specific to our jobs. And what I think um, we owe our communities, what I think we owe each other. And so it's, they're very, very specific that way. And then as Amy mentioned, a little bit about scalability, which I hope is fairly obvious uh, going through about how some of these things can be applied. Uh, many, of the, many of the points I'm going to make are, are uh, about qualities and about the kind of institutions that we want to direct and what we're responsible for. That's just, those are givens that have nothing to do with scalability. They're core things to do as a library director. Um, and then from, I think we said we'd take a break around 10, 15-ish or so, 15 minutes. And then uh, I think I'm going to facilitate uh, some question and answers or just big discussion around bigger themes. And then I think this afternoon we have some time as well to, to uh, pick things up, plus lunch. Um, just, uh, I realize I have a lot of uh, old, um, I have a lot of long time friends in this room. So people like Nancy, who uh, we've been friends since 1981 when I landed in Maine, October, um, and many others in this room. So um, we've been through a lot of things, but I realize probably folks don't know the background that, I, that, that I'm bringing, or the context, let's call it that. And it's been a combination of, um, prior to Maine, I was at Carnegie Library of Pittsburgh, as well as uh, Allegheny Community College. Uh, which is very, that was where my respect started for uh, community college, but also post-secondary students outside of traditional means. What a dynamic place that, um, it's just an amazing institution. Um, and you can't help but respect people who are, who are on that path in life. And then a lot of stuff with OCLC, but I put a lot of time in, as many of you have, with in-state things. So the Maine Library Association, uh, Cultural Affairs Council, um, the Library Commission, and other things as well as community boards. And uh, so they were, these are all experiences that have had everything to do with informing uh, my response to not just community service but organizational uh, dysfunction or health. When I was on Savannah, <laughs> I caught up with a lot of stuff. My wife said before I left, she said, you should she saw this, she'd never seen this slide before, and she said, you should do this in your jammies, because I had a ton of days where 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, I was still in my jammies. <laughs> I was just reading, looking out the window, and thinking about things. And I caught up with a lot of stuff that I just had hauled around for, th for 40 years moving. So a series like Meanings of Modern Art by John Russell. Some of you may know he's art critic for the Times many, many years, and it's an eight volume set that's about, each volume's about 60 pages, but I never found the time to read it. And so, those kinds of things, reading Ulysses, <laughs> hold, the, hold the applause. <laughs> <laughs> Movable Feast, you know, all the stuff that I wanted, uh, uh, Unbroken, just knock me out, both as a, as, as a, as a runner and, you know, all of it. Oh, that's persistence. Um, traveling to Teton County Library System in, in Jackson, um, Salt Lake City Library, uh, and Charlotte Mecklenburg. So talking with colleagues as well as P a number of us were at PLA and uh, having conversations with colleagues there as well. 
And then trying to bring those insights, and they were coming very easily and n not crystal clear, but everything was in the context of my own institution and thinking about you know, all the, a lot of my assumptions and, and other things. Tons of music and podcasts, trying to hit some tennis balls, hike, run, ski. I did um, what's known uh, in, in uh, my family, I did, I did a, a, two Rick Spears. Some of you who know Rick <laughs> know that he blew out his leg skiing. I had one that was embarrassing skiing, which uh, was a rib injury. And the other one was uh, tripping on a root in the Brunswick Commons after I was healed. And then I'd spent four more weeks recovering from that. But the emotional, the emotional response I had to this, because I didn't have to produce a paper, I didn't have to produce a product. And I, you know, I initially suggested that, and pe people who knew better kept saying, "No, you, know, you don't have to be heroic. You know, just go enjoy it and read and do stuff." The sort of overwhelming feeling of gratitude for having the time and the space to think about things, but then also thinking, "I need to bring," and this is part of what I want to talk about: bring that back to the institution on behalf of colleagues, their jobs, and how to provide space in scale, scalability in scale to be able to do the same thing. And teaching company courses, which I think are the greatest thing invented in the world. Um, programs on, uh, well, one on Ulysses before I started reading. <laughs> um, on uh, organizational complexity, um, some science. Um, I don't know if any of you have great book sets at home. Well, you'll know the Syntopicon, which is one of the great uh, works, I think, in, um, in uh, the whole presentation of knowledge, which uh, uh, lays out in, in outline form connections to all sorts of concepts and ideas across the grade books, and also an, introduce, an introduction to uh, all kinds of authors. But the big thing that started to coalesce was what was my role? And what were my responsibilities beyond uh, showing up and working hard? What, what additionally was in there? And then things about uh, nature and making lists like crazy. But the point was, the more I thought about things, I was having hemisphere confusion. You know, it didn't, things would seem to get clear, then I'd overthink things, then I'd go back to simplicity and basics. It wasn't, I'm sorry to say, it wasn't an easy problem. It wasn't as easy as it all sounds. But here are some of the conclusions. And these are just some of them, but these are some that I want to touch upon today. That, you know, we have a team a team structure at Portland. And we talked about it last October to some colleagues at the MLA meeting. The folks I talked to nationally, I learned some things from people in response to that, but the overwhelming response I got was affirmation that, pe that this made sense to people. And what particularly made sense were the communication relationships that show on that chart that we handed out. So that was very important to me because that is something that I initially pushed, but it's been organic and it's grown through, through the uh, institution. It became also very clear to me that the major quality that has to exist, at least at Portland Public Library, and I think it's true in our institutions, is one of creativity. Forget, I think, all the specifics about what technology is coming down the road, what platform, what format, I think if the creativity is not there in our institutions, I, I don't know how you can figure stuff out. It's all about openness, brain power. It's not about the details, in my mind. That my position, and I think this is probably going to apply to everybody in the room, uh, as, it was, as it's currently structured, doesn't have the resources, the time or the support to be able to consistently focus on leadership, advocacy, infrastructure, and resource development, which are the things that I think are my unique responsibilities. The hard and soft infrastructure, and I call it a phase one capacity. Yeah, we have a library management system as all well. you do, we have other things. But there are other pieces of infrastructure that have to be put in play at, at our library. Whether, you know, and I'm talking about things as basic as uh, more security cameras, say, or um, how to handle digital, digital resources, whether to make a change out of I, you know, all these various things, but 
for me, time's a wasting in terms of getting some of those platforms in play for my institution. And then finally, a common set of core principles. We've got them floating around in our library, but they've never fully been put together and vetted and hammered out because I think there's a slide later on that, that Jim Neal from Columbia University, who's a librarian, made a comment at a meeting that some of us were at. And I'll tie it to that. But basically, I think more and more, I think strategic planning has too much overhead, formal strategic planning, too much overhead, too much um, both of its creation and its follow through. And I think it's more important that we follow our instincts, that we understand based on principles and consensus, that we follow our instincts and we build, we build actions and strategies built on these principles rather than, a, it doesn't mean you don't have accountability or you don't have benchmarks or whatever. So what came down for me, there were four basic areas that made all the sense in the world to me to keep my eye on. Clearly the users. That's where our service team strategy started. The environment in which we're working and the users are experiencing things, our infrastructure, and our governance. Now I'll explain some of these uh, as we go forward. Why? Hmm. There we go. Well, okay, look. I'm going to tell you unabashedly, and the people who know me in this room, I'm an optimist. I just am. <laughs> now, the worst person in the room, in my mind, is the devil's advocate. Because you know why? The people in the room, your colleagues, they're all smart enough to have figured out the obvious that some devil's advocate brings to the table. Get on with solving it, figure it out, do it with energy and positive, and this is the theme for me all the way through. I think if you don't have optimism, and you don't have hope, I think you're in the wrong job. And you know what? Not because you're dealing with these huge deficits. And I'll make an argument why I think we're the richest we've ever been as libraries. I think each of our goals should be when we leave our institutions that somebody ought to say as the snapshot moment when you leave, boy, Billy Bob, when Billy Bob this is the golden age of East Overshoe Library. Really, I think that's what we should strive for as directors. It doesn't mean somebody's not going to come after you and do, you know, do an even better and great. Be the golden age up to that point and set it up for the next guy. But I don't see it, and I think we've got the ability to do that all the way through with the resources we've got. You know, Abe Lincoln, <laughs> to me, you know, we're not worried about holding the country together. Yeah. But look at this. I mean, sound familiar? But look at the language. Yeah, we've got uncertainty, and we've got variables floating all over the place. But the fact here is the case is known. And without open mind and transcending some of the library orthodoxy and structures, you're not going to make a new case because you've got and to address new conditions. Here's a, here's a guy... Duke Energy, Duke Energy, May 2009. Business with a license to print money. Look at this guy's concern. And you know, I think there are moments of clarity. <laughs> but you know, it doesn't stay, it doesn't stay there. And you know, it's natural. It's everything, ch things change constantly. If you think you've got a steady point in the library world or in life, you know you don't. It's not rocket science. So I think we often look for that. And it isn't just about, it isn't just about clarity. It's about the right time. It's about knowing what your institution's doing and what you should be concerned about. These guys are, these guys are glommed on to something. Apps. Keywords. Apps. Paradigm. Goals, solid waste, disposal systems. So I mean.